So welcome back to HPE Discover. This conversation, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in the Palo Alto studio. We're going to have a conversation with AWS, harnessing the AWS cloud to build game-changing applications. Art Bodau is here. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. It is nice to see you too, John. It's good to be here. So Principal Product Marketing Manager at EC2, you're in, on the front end of all the, these new applications that are coming online. We're seeing a lot of on-premise to cloud migrations. And the talk of every conversation we've been in the queue for the past six months to a year has been, I need more horsepower, where we got more scale on the workloads, next gen clouds happening, generative AI is happening on the consumer side. You guys are providing a lot of that horsepower. HPE is seeing a lot of action here. Matt Garman was at SAP Sapphire talking about the, the Amazon products supporting a lot of memory. Take us through what you guys are talking about here with HPE. Yeah, so I'm really happy to be here to talk to the folks at HPE Discover. And you know, we have a lot of other events happening here as well too. So people can stay tuned, John, uh, and attend one of our sessions for more information. Uh, but aside from that, to talk about the increased performance, one of the things that Matt launched and talked about last week was our new U7i instances. Those are our high memory instances that in my view, uh, have an astonishing 32 terabytes of memory that's attached to them there that's available to customers. So, you know, I, I remember a time, time, John, in my career here that, you know, a, a gigabyte was a lot of memory. And so to offer this kind of memory, yeah. and it's not just memory, it's additional performance that we're offering as well here with these with these instances. So these are based off of our custom Sapphire Rapid SKU from Intel. And we, this is the latest generation of those instances and in the highest amount of memory that we have. And in large point, part to what we have in our total ecosystem here is we have done in our memory optimized, our general purpose and our compute optimized instances, we also offer this Sapphire Rapid SKU to folks as well. So if you don't need 32 terabytes of memory and you need something a little smaller, we have everything you know, out there from a few gigabytes all the way up to terabytes as well to suit what customers need at that high performance level. And beyond that, I want to take this opportunity to also mention that you know, we in terms of performance, we stay on that cutting edge, John, or of performance. And so while we have Sapphire Rapids on the Intel side, we have launched Genoa on the AMD side, so the latest processor there. And as everyone you know, and I think we have had conversations uh, before about, we've also launched our own uh, silicon, purpose-built CPU silicon out there as well to provide that latest performance. And folks can actually even check out that the R8G instances that we have in that are in private preview right now. So if you're interested in an ARM-based system and you're ready for some additional performance, that's a great opportunity as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I always love to see the innovation from AWS, especially on the performance side from silicon into the chips. That's really going to power the new infrastructure. I got to ask you um, the drivers behind this because we're seeing the large memory instances from HPE customers, they're hungry for more <laughs> compute. They want more action. They need, they need more horsepower. Uh, and so what's driving these large memory instance, the demand side of it? What are you seeing? What are the game changing applications? Uh, is it migration to more performance? What's the, what are the key drivers? Yeah, uh, yeah so I'm going to, I, I want to cover two things. Uh, one is, is, is referencing back to just a couple weeks ago at SAP Sapphire, where our own CEO, Matt Garman, was there talking about the importance of you know, our relationship and as well working with SAP Sapphire. And I believe a lot of customers at HP Discover are also SAP customers. And SAP uh, databases require a tremendous amount of power and corresponding memory. So those U7i instances that I mentioned are, are using some of those SAP, are, are using those SAP workloads. So and they're designed for those HANA workloads here in the cloud. So that's one of the key areas that I have seen a great deal of growth for customers out there, particularly those that are potentially in the audience. And I'm sure there's this strange thing, John, out there going on about something called artificial intelligence. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard that term in the last six months. <laughs> Yeah, I heard about uh, generative AI. This, is that a new thing? <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. And so there are a lot of customers, when people are working on you know, training models or developing their own model or language model here associated with generative AI, they need increased performance and in many cases, increased memory. Uh, and so we have been offering a lot of different options to customers to be able to get started with that, that performance as well. And that, that ranges from those that are using 
So we do have some customers, John, that are using CPU uh, to do AI performance. So that ranges from using one of the Intel AMD or Graviton based products, all the way to customers that are using more, doing more advanced stuff. And we offer some of the most advanced accelerators in the world with the NVIDIA GPUs and also our own Tranium and Inferentia uh, uh, silicon. As you, you mentioned before, our, our strong history here yeah. in silicon development and silicon creation that kind of spans the CPU to those uh, AI, generative AI spaces, and also is underpinned by our, what we call our Nitro system as yeah. well. Yeah, you guys always deliver the goods when it comes to performance, and the Amazon, the Amazon U7i looks good for these, those, that memory piece. Because you know, one of the things we've been reporting, I want to get your reaction to this, is that these game-changing apps run a lot of unstructured data, some semi-structured data, and AI needs to eat that up, and it's their appetite for compute and, and systems clusters. GPUs, CPUs, memory is a big part of this new kind of what you call clustered systems. I call it clustered systems, but the demand for to run these workloads is not your classic throw some compute at it. It's compute, memory, and other. So you start to see the confluence of almost a configuration setup. Um, to provision that or to have instances to support those customers and those use cases. Are you seeing the same thing? I mean, what is, what's driving the appetite for this new kind of configuration? Is it, is it the AI stuff or is it more just, they need more horsepower? So I think that in general, there has been a trend in a need for more horsepower period. And I think that that predates any conversation about artificial intelligence. We have been seeing that continued increase. And on the SAP side, we see that with the memory, with the larging, the increased size of databases and customers of ours who would use the, who are interested in that would use those, if you will, U7i or our high memory instance families. And we have a lot of offerings in those spaces. And then we have the customers who are using and doing work that are training large language models, using everything from Claude 3 to uh, um, Llama and other things such as that. And those folks are doing using a lot of the GPU and Tranium and Inferentia type resources where they're banding together or clustering together, in some cases now 10,000 GPUs, John, which is to me astronomical. I mean, just to do some of their, their immediate tasks. So the, the landscape is shifting such that you need more performance, more memory and more compute. And the cloud environment is such that we've tailoring that to the different offerings that we have and to the different customer needs. So you want this for SAP, that's where our U7i uh, instances come in. And if you want something using those GPUs, we have all these accelerators, uh, including the H100 and the like, and P5 and stuff uh, available for customers to take a look at. All right, that's a great point. I mean, basically you're calling out that you guys can give optionality on performance and value based upon whatever they're looking for. Um, where does that play well for an enterprise customer? Can you give an example? I mean, if you got the options to kind of play with the knobs, if you will, I want this for that. Where, where, do they, where, where does that happen? In migrations, is it hybrid cloud? What's the value of having that, that optionality for performance and value? What does that fit for enterprise customers that are moving from on-prem to the cloud? Yeah, so I, I can give a couple of examples. One, I, I want to start with one thing that we, we talked about before, how SAP is actually now starting to run some of their own uh, cloud work and, and testing work here using Graviton. They provided us uh, some quotes for that previously. But one of the beauties, John, as you know, of the cloud has been the, avail the ability for you to expand and contract. The cloud is the ultimate place where you don't have to purchase that extra infrastructure that you need for a, a period of time for a specific task. And if you're doing or training a, la a la large language model, for example, you may require an enormous amount of a CPU or GPU effort in order to do that, or likely CPU and GPU together and memory. But you may need do that over a period of time and then not need that for a while and then want to do some retraining and update. The cloud offers customers that opportunity to use the resources when they need it and to and pay for it only when they need it, as opposed to having to acquire that those expensive resources. And in this at this point in time, those resources have become increasingly expensive and our customers are seeing the cloud as an excellent way to migrate their workloads over. And we continue to see people move over to the cloud. Also, the cloud offers a lot of security as well. I mean, all of the data that's stored, for example, in an S3 bucket, our storage vehicle is completely encrypted. 
So there is no danger of that content being visible to anyone else and it's protected and it's it's accessible you know, as well, which I think is key to our customers, accessibility and global accessibility and ease of doing that. SAP is a great example of classic enterprise app now running in the cloud. Um, how do customers move their stuff to the cloud? I mean, obviously the trend is there. You got the horsepower, you got the capabilities to, to tune it um, and run it effectively and securely. Um, Talk about the ease of use in the migration. It's been, uh, you guys have been on this journey for a while. It's happening a lot. What's the, what's the efficiency uh, plan? How do people do this right? Yeah, so I would tell customers that almost m the majority of time, it really is just what we would call lift and shift, John, where you can start a workload that you're using on an x86 based uh, uh, system or an ARM based system, or even for that matter, we also offer Mac as well in the cloud. And, and if you're doing any development on any one of those platforms, you can start by moving those workloads almost immediately and directly to the cloud. And in some cases, maybe you didn't have, and uh, you're using x86 and you want to move or transform to ARM. We also offer uh, software and AMIs and other things to be able to help you convert and move that over if you have the interest for those that do. And likewise, if you're on the x86 side, it's easy to just take those workloads and move them into the cloud. And to my point about starting earlier about the offering of Sapphire Rapids in Genoa, you know, by moving to the cloud, John, you get some of the latest and greatest instances on the x86 side, in addition to the performance that we deliver on our, our Graviton and ARM-based systems as well. So we try to make it as simple as possible for customers to move over. The big conversation at HPE is obviously the impact of AI. Amazon, you've been deploying AI for customers. Take us through that, those deployments. What are some of the needs? What's evolving? Uh, what's what do you have a clear line of sight on when it comes to deploying AI in AWS, and what's what's around the corner? Well, we've been deploying AI at AWS and leveraging AI for a lot of different functions at Amazon uh, at large for you know, many many years now already. And you know, I think people have seen that in some of uh, the Amazon.com side. We're working with things like Alexa. Uh, obviously, clear implication of doing and listening to natural speech processing to be able to translate that. And you know, the number of times you go someplace, John, and someone asks Alexa, set a timer or whatever. That's a form also of artificial intelligence. But also the things that we're doing and the tool sets that we're providing to customers from our SageMaker to Bedrock, where we're trying to simplify and integrate that to make it easiest for customers to get started in the cloud using AI. So we're offering tools and we're offering our experience to customers as well. We're trying to do things such as, I was just uh, demoing to, to customers last week, uh, utilization of code that we generated for them to be able to do things and replicate SQL queries uh, into CloudFront and the like, so that you can actually so we can empower your developers and empower people, engineers. You can use that to simplify people's jobs, that generation of code, that AI that we offer as well. And also for the customers that are going to build and, and uh, generate their own large language model in the cloud, we also offer the system to do that as well. And we're excited for customers that have migrated those implementations over. And I, I think you know, folks have heard you know, some of the work that we're doing with companies such as NVIDIA uh, launching you know, the Grace Blackwell stuff in the coming years here uh, happening. And that's a sign of kind of the partnerships that we have across the board for artificial intelligence and the work that we continuously do. Yeah, and again, the title of this talk is Harnessing AWS to Build Game-Changing Applications. As the product marketing manager at EC2, you're in the middle of the action. Um, the compute is critical. EC2 has been a big part of the power source that drives the infrastructure as a service for AWS. It's involved in all the aspects of or what's around it. Uh, you mentioned some of the memory uh, instances, which is great. What does the game-changing apps look like? How are you looking at that market right now and what's coming online? Because we're seeing the same pattern we saw in cloud 1.0 or first generation cloud of SaaS apps being deployed on the cloud. Now you have more complex systems coming on board because um, they got to power this new gen AI architecture, which is heavy data, a lot of processing power, but it, it's not yesterday's processing. It's not yesterday's data processing. It's got a new look to it. It's got neural networks. You got all kinds of new things. What are some of these game changing applications you're seeing come in from the enterprise? 
We're, we're seeing a, a lot of different game-changing applications. And some of those applications are things such as, you know, we work with companies such as AstraZeneca that is in the cloud, using the cloud for drug discovery, for example. We've worked with other companies uh, such as artificial and company artificial intelligence company Leonardo.ai that has been processing images, <clears throat> excuse me, in the cloud. And you know, there that that is image recognition uh, that they're doing. So the game-changing applications, I think, John, vary from industry to industry and company to company. And but I think that the the salient point is is that everyone is using uh, is these game-changing applications are helping to simplify and also provide more value for a lot of customers. They're uh, opening doors to let more people, as I mentioned on the coding example as well, allow more people to get involved in the process to to reduce. Uh, to keep the the engineers that you have in your staff uh, focused on what is most important to you and what is delivering that innovation. So we're seeing innovation across the board with a lot of things. I mentioned uh, SAP before. You know, Tufts has done work uh, here, and some of our other customers uh, that are out there that have done a lot of discussions and, and movement in, into the cloud. There's a lot of that happening as we go forward here. Well, I love how these apps are changing the world. A lot of hard problems being solved. More horsepower drives more, more AI. Again, the world's changing. And the more the more we get, more compute we have, the more we can process. So I think we're seeing kind of those solutions that we look back that were either high performance computing or um, not gettable, attainable to secure, yep. uh, are now in sight. This is the key to the creative <laughs> Cambrian explosion we're living in. Yeah, and and to your point about the amount of data. No, we've been collecting data for things for a long period of time, John, about a lot of activities. And, and, and I work with a lot of customers. Let's take the healthcare example. You know, you've been collecting a lot of data about genome uh, for a period of time, but the challenge has been processing that data and what to do with it. And AI and the additional performance and memory that we're able to offer in the cloud helps you be able to create those revolutions. So it's being able to actually process the data and then be able to do something with that information and make intelligent choices. So storing lots of information in an Excel spreadsheet, it makes it really challenging for your staff to be able to decide what to do and decide like how to make uh, decisions going forward uh, here. But one of the things that AI in concert with having this additional memory and performance in the cloud allows you to do is, is help improve the process to do that yeah. and make it faster and be able to provide game-changing responses to customers out there. It's interesting, you know, Art, you mentioned that. I've, I've been talking to a lot of customers around how they're looking at the on-premise future and versus cloud. And, you know, and one, one CIO said to me, you know, a lot of people are overthinking their on-premise AI strategy because a lot of it's just simple data processing. You can just throw in the cloud with EMR and just you're done, right? So, so the cloud, it can do a lot of that data processing and a lot of this stuff that pe people are trying to architect on-premise are a little bit overbuilt. Um, and so you're starting to see the, the data processing discussion come back front and center where this clear lines of sight where it's really advantageous to keep it in the cloud. And that's getting more complex too in the sense of you guys are building security and optionality in there. So very nuanced point, but sometimes people don't even need to do the on-prem for, for the Gen AI, just do the data processing in the cloud. Yeah. So I am a clear cloud advocate. Uh, of you course, know, I'm, you're biased. You know, yep. Of course, right, I work for the <laughs> cloud provider, AWS. But I would also say that cloud can simplify the effort. It can simplify, you know, a, a lot of innovations, and it can simplify, you know, when a cut when a uh, an industry or a customer is looking at a startup. Do you want to invest in some of that equipment? It's costly sometimes, and you may not know that result. The other thing is 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 that with regard to the cloud, there's a lot of security that's embedded within. You know, we guarantee here at AWS that nobody that works for Amazon has any access to any customer data that's placed into the cloud all data at rest is encrypted and we run end-to-end -end encryption within the cloud as well here. And we've designed that from the bottom up here. And we've even uh, had our architecture reviewed by third parties, John, uh, to do that and talk about that last year, we, we do that. And we're committed to transparency for customers so that they understand what that security story is. So we are working on that side to make sure that the cloud is the most secure possible thing. And I think the other area is, is the tremendous innovations that the cloud offers customers, both from managed services that we can deliver all the way to the just the silicon and the hardware that's here and available. You can get anything from a bare metal instance here mm -hmm. to a serverless uh, component. 
Well, the, and the memory instances are available. It's a great example of always having the best choice of horsepower. That's Art, right. great to have you on this conversation. We're on HP Discover coverage. Uh, thanks for good to see you again. And uh, hey, let's see those game changing apples keep coming on the, online. Thanks, for, thanks for doing it. it. Was, it, it absolutely, and it was great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto studio as part of HPE Discover 2024. Thanks for watching. Thank you.